Assalamualaikum everyone. Hope you guys are doing well. So in this video, we're going to learn how to solve trigonometric equations. Now, the end process of solving a trigonometric equation is actually a very simple part, but uh, it might seem a little overwhelming initially because there are a lot of concepts that we have to learn. There are a lot of prerequisites, but once we start, uh, once we get to trigonometric equations, you will notice that it's not that difficult after all. Now, before we learn how to solve trigonometric equations, there is the concept of quadrants. Now, basically, this is what a this is what a quadrant uh, this is what four quadrants look like. So we go in an anticlockwise direction. Okay, so this is zero. This is ninety. This is one eighty. This is two seventy, and this is three sixty. So this is considered the first quadrant. This is considered the second quadrant. This is considered the third quadrant, and this is considered the fourth quadrant. Now, when we talk about the first quadrant, let me write that again. When we say it's the first quadrant, we means any angle in the first quadrant will be somewhere in between zero to 90. It has to be greater than zero, it has to be less than 90, basically an acute angle. Now, here, all trigonometric ratios are positive. What does that mean? That means if you pick in the first quadrant, if you pick any angle, given that it's between zero and 90, let's say 30, you find out sine of that value, you find out cos of that value, and you find out tan of that value. Now, what that value may be exactly, that's that's not relevant, but what's relevant is the sine of the value. So you'll notice that sine 30 is positive. You will notice cos 30 is positive. You will notice tan 30 is also positive. So which is why we say that in the first quadrant, all trigonometric ratios are positive. Now, throughout this, this process, you might have this question that when will we use this or what will a question look like? So hold on to that thought, hold on to that question. You will find out when we get to an actual equation. Now let's talk about the second quadrant. In the second quadrant, only sine is positive, okay? And we'll relate this with the graph as well. So that means if you pick any value between 90 and 180, let's say 150, and you take sine of that value, you will notice that's positive. But if you take cos of that value, 150, and if you take tan of that value, you will notice that whatever the answer may be, it's definitely going to be negative, okay? So think of it this way, that this is the home ground of sine. Then when it comes to the third quadrant, the third quadrant is basically the home ground of tan because any value that's in between 90 and 270, only tan of it will be positive, everything else will be negative. And then last but not the least, the fourth quadrant is the home ground of cos. Okay, so an easy way to remember this is ASTC. Okay, just remember the initials. And this is basically in a anti-clockwise direction. ASTC is in an anti-clockwise direction. Now you can, there are many ways that students have come up with to memorize this. One is that all science teachers are crazy. So you can remember that, that all science teachers are crazy. Although there is no R, so you can remember it as all science teachers crazy. Or an easier way, a, a more subtle way actually, is add sugar to coffee. Okay, so add sugar to coffee is a way to memorize this, okay? so. Once again, a quick summary. In the first quadrant, any value between 0 and 90, if you take out the sine of that value, cos of that value, or tan of that value will be positive. In the second quadrant, any value between 90 and 180, only sine of it will be positive. In the third quadrant, you will notice that only tan is positive. So if you pick any value between 180 and 270, it doesn't matter what the value is. Let's say it's 200, you will notice that's positive. However, cos of that value will be negative. Okay, so thought uh, since I've written it down for the first and second quadrant, might as well write it for the third and fourth. And sine of 200 will also turn out to be negative. And then finally, if you pick any value in the fourth quadrant, meaning as long as it's in between 270 and 360, if you find out sine of, let's say 300, that will be negative. If you find cos of 300, that will be positive, but tan of 300 will also be negative. So that's why we say that the fourth quadrant is the home ground of cos, okay? Now, these are some values which I've made a video on it. I'll, I'll uh, try and attach a link to it also. Uh, there's an easier way to memorize these values and you should have these mem values memorized. And now it's all the more necessary because you have this topic which is added officially in the syllabus and now you have a non-calculator paper as well. So you gotta make sure that you memorize these values. There's an easier way to memorize them. I've made a video on it, like I said, I'll share it so you guys can go over it. Now, then we have another concept which is called basic angle and theta or 
x. So basic angle is basically an angle with the help of which we solve trigonometric equations, and theta or x is basically the solution to trigonometric to the trigonometric equation. So let's talk about the basic angle. So the basic angle is always positive. Okay, so remember that the basic angle is always positive. It's always acute. Okay, and number three is that it's always made with the horizontal axis. Okay, so the basic angle is always made with the horizontal axis. So this is what it can possibly look like. So here are your four quadrants. Okay, so if it's in the first quadrant, then this is what the basic angle will look like. If it's in the second quadrant, then this is what the basic angle will be. If it's in the third quadrant, this is what it's going to be. And if it's in the fourth quadrant, this is what it's going to be. So remember, this is 0, 90, 180, 270. And then finally, 360. OK, now, then it comes to, then we get to theta. Theta or x, which is basically going to be the solution to the trigonometric equation. Now, what's the solution going to be? And how is it linked with the basic angle? We're going to find out. I'm sure at this point you guys have a lot of questions as to how will we know what we have to do and stuff like that. Don't worry about it. Like I said, you'll find the answer to it very soon. So remember, theta is always measured from the horizontal, from the positive horizontal axis. Okay, so in short, it's measured from the positive horizontal axis. And as far as IGCSE math students are concerned, this is all there is that you need to know. So if you're an ad math student, you would know that there is more to it, but it's not necessary for, it's, it's uh, not relevant for IGCSE math students to know that. So what's, what's uh, theta? What does theta look like? This is what it looks like. Here's zero, here's 90, here's 180. Here's 270 and here's 360. Actually, by the way, there's another key point that I would like you guys to add, and that is it has no fixed range. So as far as the basic angle, also known as alpha is concerned, it has a range, which is that it's always acute, it's always positive. Theta, on the other hand, has no fixed range. Okay, so this is a point that I would like you guys to add. Now, just to give you an example, imagine that you have the basic angle of 20 degrees in the second quadrant. Okay, and you're asked to calculate theta or x. Depends on the question, whether it's whether the unknown used is x or theta. So the way that you will calculate it is very simple. You will start from the positive horizontal axis. You will go in an anti-clockwise direction. So don't confuse this with bearing. A lot of people, a lot of students confuse this with bearing. This is not bearing. Bearing is what's measured from the north in a clockwise direction. This is not bearing. So you will go in an anti-clockwise direction. You will keep on going till you reach alpha. And what's this angle going to be? This angle will be equal to 180. Why 180? Because, I mean, 180 is not the answer. But if, let's say, we had gone till here, this would have been 180. And from 180, we're going to subtract 20. So we get 160 degrees. So this is what theta or x is equal to. Now, there are some standard rules, which I will write down, but I don't encourage you guys to memorize them because you'll end up, they'll basically end up taking a lot of space in your brain. So you can just figure it out on the go. Okay, but I'll write them down just in case. So basically, if the solution is in the first quadrant, and once again, you will understand what I mean by that when we get to a question, then theta is the same as alpha. Why? Because theta is the angle that is made from the positive horizontal axis up until alpha. Okay, so what's theta? Theta is the angle that is measured from the positive horizontal axis up until we reach the basic angle, which is alpha. So if let's say you start from the positive horizontal axis and you measure the angle that is made up until the basic angle, that's gonna be the same as alpha. If however, we get to the second quadrant, then theta will be equal to, let's see. So this is the angle that I wanna write down. Obviously it's gonna be in terms of alpha. So up until here it's 180, but I need to go back in the, uh, I, I need to get rid of alpha. Okay, so that would be 180 minus alpha. Then when it comes to the third quadrant, in the third quadrant, up until here, that's 180, and now another uh, couple of degrees further, so that a couple of degrees is basically alpha, so theta would be equal to 180 
plus alpha. And then finally, when we get to the fourth quadrant, in the fourth quadrant, theta would be equal to, let's see, a full circle is 360, and now from 360, we need to get rid of alpha, so it's going to be 360 minus alpha. And there you go, that's the, these are the, so this is, these are the standard rules. Now, let's see all of this come together when we solve a full length question. I so before that, I just realized that I mentioned earlier that we're going to relate the concept of quadrants to graphs. So let's do that now. Now, if we go back to the graph of sine, and if you haven't seen the graph video, I would suggest you watch that. Notice that the graph of sine is positive from 0 to 90, and it's positive from 90 to 180. However, from 180 to 270 and 270 to 360, it's negative. Okay, so you can see it's positive in the first quadrant because the first quadrant is from 0 to 90. It's also positive in the second quadrant. In the third quadrant and in the fourth quadrant, you can see that it's negative. And that's why we see that in the first quadrant, all trigonometric ratios, that means sine is obviously included. And in the second quadrant as well, sine is also positive. And in the third and fourth quadrant, you can see that sine is negative, And the fourth quadrant also, sine is negative. Now, when we talk about cos, we see that cos is positive in the first quadrant. In the second and third, we see that it's negative. And in the fourth quadrant, we see once again that it's positive. So that's why we say that the first and the fourth quadrant is where cos is positive. Then if you look at the graph of tan, once again, it's positive in the first quadrant, just like any other trigonometric graph, and it's positive in the third quadrant. So it's positive in the first and the third. In the second and the fourth, it's negative. So here you can see tan is positive in the first and the third. In the second and the fourth, it's negative. Okay, so that's that's basically where this concept comes from. It's not a completely independent concept. It's related to graphs only. Okay, now let's solve a full length trigonometric equation and see what things look like. Let's see what is the step-by-step -step procedure. So first of all, we have sine x, which is equal to 0 0.5. Now, every time with a trigonometric equation, you will notice that we are given a certain range. And you won't find this range with any other equation. And why is that? Let's try and pay some attention to understand this. Now, although this is some extra knowledge for you, but it's, it's important. Now, suppose that you have a linear equation, which is 3x minus 1 equals to 5. That means, technically, you're looking for the point of intersection between y equals to 3x minus 1 and y equals to 5. Now, we all know that there's just going to be one point of intersection, but let's look at it on the side as well. Uh, Desmos is what I'm looking for. Okay, so the two equations that we have are y equals 3x minus 1 and y equals to 5. y equals to 5. You can see that there is one point of intersection, and that is x equals to 2. And uh, anyone can solve this equation. It's a no-brainer. 3x equals to 6, x equals to 2. So there's one point of intersection. Let's take an exponential equation on the other hand. Let's say you have 2 power x equals to 8. So here also, you're looking for the point of intersection between y is equals to 2 power x. 2 power x and y equals to 8. And you can see that there is one point of intersection, which is x equals to 3. When it comes to a quadratic, let's say x squared equals to 9. So once again, what are you looking for? You're looking for a point of intersection between y equals to x squared and y equals to 9. And you can see that there are a total of two points of intersection. But when it comes to a trigonometric equation, okay, like the one I have over here, which is y equals to sine x, y equals to sine x, okay, and y equals to 0 0.5, y equals to 0 0.5. Look at the number of solutions that we have. They're practically infinite. And why is that the case? Because trigonometric graphs, as I mentioned earlier, are cyclical in nature, as in they keep repeating. So because they keep repeating, that is why we have infinitely many solutions. And that's the reason why you will always notice that there is a certain range given. Okay, so that was a bit of a, that was some background, although not necessary, you can still solve a trigonometric equation without knowing all this. But it's, it's something interesting to note that how come with only a trigonometric equation, we're given a range and we're not given a range with any other equation. So let's solve this trigonometric equation, which can be done, which will be done in three steps. Now, the first step is that you determine 
that you determine the possible quadrants. Now, what does that mean? Determine possible quadrants. Now, notice sine x equals to 0 0.5, which means that it's positive. Now, where do we sign? Where do we find sine to be positive? We find it to be positive in the first and the second quadrant. So that means here are our quadrants. Sine will be positive in the first and the second. So it's going to be positive here and it's going to be positive here. The next step that we do is perhaps the most important step is that we find alpha, which is the basic angle, by taking inverse, by taking inverse of the positive value. Okay, so even if let's say it was sine inverse of minus 0 0.5, we would have taken sine inverse of, uh, even if let's say this was sine x equals to minus 0 0.5, we would have still taken inverse of positive 0 0.5. So we find inverse, uh, we find alpha by taking inverse of the positive value, and what do we get? Let's do that quickly, sine x equals to 0 0.5, which means alpha equals to 30 degrees. So if you take sine inverse of 0 0.5, you'll get 30 degrees. Now that means the basic angle, which will be in the first and the second quadrant, is 30 degrees. So 30 degrees here, 30 degrees here. Then comes the third and the final step. And what's that? The third and the final step is that you find theta or x. In this case, obviously, x because it's sine x equals to 0 0.5. Now, how will I find out x? Here's how. We will go in an anticlockwise direction and we'll keep on going till we reach the alpha, till we reach the basic angle. So what's this angle going to be? This angle is going to be 30 degrees. And then once again, we will go in an anticlockwise direction till we reach alpha. What's this angle going to be? This angle will be 180 minus 30. You can show your working or you can do it directly which is equal to what, which is equal to 150 degrees. And then, you know, you can also check your answer. If this comes in a calculator paper, you can check and find out what sine 30 is. You will notice that you get 0 0.5 and also find out what sine 150 is. You will notice that you also get 0 0.5. So that means the two solutions that we have are absolutely correct, okay? So this was just an introduction to the concept of trigonometric equations. In the next video, inshallah, I'll be solving some past paper questions. So I'll see you guys then. And uh, that's it for this video. See you guys in the next one. Until then, take care. Allah Hafiz.